So you got yourself an espresso machine and you're wondering, where do I start? What accessories do I need? Hi, YouTube friends. I'm Jess and I like to optimize life through different products and mental health, life hacks. And I like to have a lot of fun while I'm doing all of this. And about a year ago, I released a budget must have espresso gear video. In that time, I've learned a lot. I feel like the coffin industry, even in that last year has changed a lot with you know, the pandemic really accelerating, making coffee at home and, and the accessibility of all that information and people trying things out. So in that year, I've learned a lot. I've tried things a lot. I've upgraded some of my items. I've upgraded quite a few of my items, not the espresso machine. I'd like to go through a little bit of all these different items that I have, what you would need from A to Z for your espresso making journey. Get a good feel of your machine and your equipment before investing in more gear or go ahead and buy all the stuff and then you know sell it. But I find incrementally going and upgrading will help a lot in that you don't necessarily get the wrong things. Now keep in mind that this list isn't exhaustive. It really depends on a lot of things that you would also like or need in any situation. Let's get started. All of these items or equivalents will be in the description down below as well as their full reviews if I have any. Let's get started with the scale and you wanna scale with a timer. Since these are all more of a medium budget list. We're not going with the most basic, but actually this is not even that expensive. It's like between 30 to 50 bucks. I can't remember exactly, but you, this is a scale that I reviewed and I really liked it. And it has a timer included on it. It's made more specifically for pour over. I could definitely use it with espresso when I just manually start the timer and stop the timer. Now, why would you need a scale? This is pretty much arguably the one thing that you really, really need. You wanna be able to weigh your dose at the beginning and then weigh your output, which is the amount of espresso that you're getting in your cup. And that will give you the ratio and all those recipes that you're seeing. Oftentimes roasters will have parameters for espresso and you can also use that as some sort of comparison to see if you have to grind finer or coarser. And then timing it, of course, gives you some sort of a benchmark that you can compare what your extractions are and how it tastes and all that and evaluate if you should grind finer or grind coarser. The second item that I really feel is important is a bottomless portafilter. You will have to find a bottomless portafilter that's meant for your machine. So if you have a DeLonghi, I believe it's a 51 millimeter, a Breville Barista Express, which is a really popular one, is more in the 53 millimeter. I went with the Breville dual boiler one with a wood handle. I've done a full review on this as well. E61 group heads have their own portafilter, so just make sure you get the right one for your machine. They're not always interchangeable unless they're just an E61 group head, which is a very standardized thing. The reason you wanna go for a bottomless portafilter is because you can examine your shot. If your puck isn't prepped really well, that's when you'll get the so-called channeling, it means that it's not extracting evenly and we want good, even extraction for espresso. Also other benefits of a bottomless portafilter is just less cleaning I find overall because you don't have the double spouted portafilter. So my Breville dual boiler came with the double spouted. I have not touched it in forever. I just used the bottomless. I used the same basket that came with the Breville and just popped it in here. Also, I have used less Kafisa powder, pretty much half of what I used to use for the Breville double spouted portafilter because I now just take the basket out and put it in a glass jar with hot water and Kafisa and clean that out. I don't have to put the entire basket with the portafilter into it. I actually barely clean the portafilter. Sometimes I'll just wipe inside the ring here on the sides. It's pretty much it. With any portafilter, I would also suggest you get a dosing ring. So let's say you're dosing into the portafilter. I had a Barazza Sete 270 before. Well, it would make a lot less mess with the dosing funnel. If you're using a dosing cup like a Niche Zero, for example, you may not need it because once again, it depends on your workflow and your needs. And if you have a Breville Barista Express, there's actually a really interesting dosing cup that you can buy as an accessory that I will link down below. But also I could WDT without making such a mess because when you do that, you haven't compressed the puck yet. So it's gonna be a little bit loose fine. It's gonna be easier for the espresso to fall out. You'll wanna be a little bit more mindful and careful with that. It just helps less messy. And not all dosing rings are made equal. This dosing ring, has magnets on the back and also sits on the outside of your portafilter. So it doesn't eat up space on the inside. See, it's pretty flush here. When it eats space on the inside, it makes a ring that's somewhat deep, half of a centimeter maybe, or one centimeter deep into your portafilter. And then you're gonna have to work harder to level that out. Whereas you don't have to do that as much already with this because it sits on the outside of the portafilter rather than the inside of the portafilter. So my Breville dual boiler came with this tamp. This tamp, is not great. I used it very, very, very few times at the beginning because I didn't have anything else at the time. In my budget espresso video, I mentioned 
using something called a metal and it has a leveler on one side, but it's kind of useless because you're just moving the grinds on the top. You're not moving the grinds throughout the basket, which is more what you would use with a WDT tool. I really just don't even use this. It's a pretty loose fit. Not great, which means that when you push down, it's not super even. Anytime you have a little bit of a defect in your puck prep, well, that's gonna increase any chances of channeling, which of course we wanna reduce. So you can see here, it leaves a little bit of coffee around the edges. I switched that to this. I have a full review of this as well. And I ended up getting the one with the little rings. I think it's so much prettier. It's supposed to help with channeling as well because it just kind of brings the water in certain directions. I, I don't know if it's really helped that much because I also do a long manual pre-infusion with my Breville dual boiler, but I find it does work well. And I really, like the way it looks, it's very pretty. It's very Zen Garden-esque. The most important thing whenever you choose a tamper is to check the size of your basket. So what you could do is you could grab a caliper and actually measure the interior of the basket. Once you get that dimension, then you can find a tamper that is closer to that size. So this is a 58.5 millimeter. They also come in 58 and 58.5. That allows to get a much tighter fit. So it barely moves. What I also really like with this tamper is that it's self-leveling because it has this lip here so it sits so it's really like a stamp where you push and then the air escapes through there and you're able to get a nice even straight down push now it's not calibrated like the forest tamper but it's also about a quarter of the price of the force tamper. So you can adjust the tamper depth so that it does stop at a certain depth. I leave it loose now and just go by resistance. And once I feel I can't really push that much harder, I just stop. I've had this for a while. I haven't had a strong urge to upgrade to the force tamper. I really enjoy it. It's got a beautiful wood on it. I'm very much content with this for now. <laughs> we'll see in the future. Big must for me too. Just make sure you get a good tight fit with your basket. Another item is, mm, I would still say it's somewhat of a must unless your espresso bar is just this really used up wood table that you do not care about making marks and rings and scuffs and cracks or chips. I used to have a black flat tamping mat that didn't go in the corner, but just sat on. I had a review of that as well. That was great for the double spouted, but then once I went into the flat, you see here how it sits like this. I kind of need to go on the edge of the table. So what I did is I sold that for once I got the bottomless and I went instead with a tamper holder and I got one with one extra hole so that I could put my tamper right there. So the port of filter goes in here. It sits right here. It's just more of a place to sit in so it doesn't move. Everything is settled in one place and then I don't mess up my quartz counter because it is hard to repair this thing. Trust me, I've made some bobos. I don't wanna do that again. So get yourself a nice stand and it's nice wood. I like it. It kind of matches my Weber Workshop's key wood landing pad actually. Now the next item that I have is interesting. This is a single dose bean cellar that I made myself. I got the glass files online. I'll link it down below. I have a full video of this and then I made a little stand for it. I actually started single dosing before I got the Weber Key Workshop, actually just to practice, but I did get it before getting the Weber Workshop's key. I was using it on the Baratza 270. So at first I thought, well, single dose is annoying. Why would I ever do that? Hopper all the way. Ooh, did I change my tune? So the reason that single dose is really great is because it actually speeds up your workflow in the morning. So you do have to take some time to measure all of these out at the very beginning, and then you put them, you split them all up. It's not like a Weber Workshop's bean cellar where it's like super, super sealed and will preserve the bean freshness, but I got much less intense about the bean freshness and everything. It's just, it still tastes great. It still extracts really great. It's not like it's been sitting on my counter for a year out in the open air exposed to like oxygen and light. This works fine. There's a nice cork top. It looks great. A single dose. I didn't even include any kind of canisters or ways to conserve your beans because I just don't feel that's an absolute necessity for the beginning. I do have seal vacs that I use as reusable vacuum sealed packs. And I've done a full review of that as well that go in my freezer if I have large quantities and I wanna split things up. And then otherwise I just end up leaving the coffee in the bag sealed like this. Sometimes I have two different kinds of coffee at two different rows or I'll put all of them in there and then I'll seal the bag and just leave it for a while. Don't have any of those canisters, but 
I remember seeing a James Hoffman video where he did go through all of these canisters. And the conclusion of that video was that just leaving it in a nice sealed bag like this, making sure there's not much oxygen left in there, taking the air out and then sealing it, making sure there's no light coming in was sufficient to keep it fresh. If you drink it in a reasonable time frame, like a month or so. So single dose bean cellar, not a must. Really depends on your workflow. I really like this. Now, another thing that some people really like, especially if you're in an area that has more harsh winters and the humidity drops is RDT, not to be confused with WDT. So RDT is the Ross droplet technique and it allows you to mist your beans. When you grind the beans, it adds a little bit of that moisture, but doesn't affect it in the sense that it'll affect the extraction and the flavor of it. It's just so that it reduces the static when you're grinding, so it doesn't cling on to everywhere around the machine for dear life, and you want it to go into your portafilter. So doing the RDT will allow that to happen. But for some reason, I keep saying shot timer here, even though I mean shot mirror. I'm not sure what happened here with my brain. So let's just pretend that I said shot mirror the whole time and um, we'll, just, we'll just play the video. Another thing that you can get is a shot timer. This is absolutely not a must. This is a shot timer that I made with like a cheap bicycle mirror. I just like made this myself with this and I had this old card business holder thingy. So I'm gonna actually link a proper shot timer in the description down below. Paired with the bottomless portafilter, you can observe your shot and not have to crank your head and look underneath every morning, which is, not the most fun activity, personally. I did do that for like a good year, I think, until this was very recent for me. So this is a nice to have, not a must, especially if you don't have a bottomless portafilter. filter. It's kind of light, you don't need it. Now you would also need a knock box. So I'm gonna link the Breville one because it got really good reviews. And this one, I find the opening a little too narrow. So I end up always having to pick up little grinds anyway. Whereas the Breville one is the opposite shape goes like this, it's able to capture all the grinds into the knock box, which is the point, because when you're done your extraction, you will always need to knock the puck out. There was a few weeks that before I got my knock box, I had put it in the garbage, but I like composting my pucks, so that was kind of crappy. But I would knock it on the side of the garbage bin, which is plastic. I didn't love it. It worked most of the time, but this just makes things a lot easier. It means also I don't have to go back and forth in my kitchen. I can just do everything in one place in my coffee bar. There's also a knockbox drawer that I wanted to get, but it just didn't quite fit on my limited space counter. It's really cool. I'm gonna link it down below. And what it does is it allows you to knock the pucks into a drawer and then you can sit your grinder on top of that. So it takes up just so much less room and also if all of your gears together in one place, it just allows your workflow to be so nice and efficient and compact. Now the two last things that I have are if you drink milk-based espresso drinks. A good frothing jug. This is a dupe of a GB jug. It's so, so similar though. One thing I do not like about this, however, is it doesn't have any measurements inside. So I have a more rounder spout end. I've had that in my other video too, but I'll link it down below. It is really great because you don't need to guess the milk. I have an idea that it's generally halfway from the bottom to the bottom of the spout, and that's generally four ounces of milk, which is just what I need for my flat whites. This is a very pointy tip, and the pointy tip allows you to get more fine line. So it really depends what you're doing. I like having both. Do you need both? Certainly not, especially if you're at the very beginning of your latte art journey and you're not really nailing the hearts or anything, you're not gonna be doing anything crazy in terms of design. So start slow. I would say get the round one at the beginning, easier for beginner. That's what I got with the, the little markings. A round spout is a great one to start with and you can go all the way into intermediate and you can do a bunch of different patterns, tulips, rosettas, swans. The pour and flow rate is a little bit faster than a sharp spout which restricts the flow and creates fine detailed lines, but that's for really advanced patterns. I've done swans and I've done rosettas and stuff with the sharp as well, but you can do that with the round as well. But then it also can boil down to preference, which one you like. So if you're really not sure, you could always get both, but if you're really just looking for one, I would say start with the round spout, work with that. You probably won't see a huge difference between the two for certain designs. Also, I have a really fun one-year latte art journey video that I'm gonna link down below. This description is gonna be wild. And lastly, 
also made a video about this cup as like a review as well as explaining why latte cup size matters. This is the Acme six and a half ounce, I believe, cup. I didn't get the saucer. This whole week I dropped coffee so many times on my shirt. I had to like this shirt, I washed it and I just like kept dropping coffee everywhere. So a saucer, c'est pas fou, hein? Debating about the saucer, I'm a minimalist. I don't wanna have more things than I need. I think I just need to have a steadier hand and not walk and drink my coffee at the same time. I don't know why I keep doing that. So for a flat white, this is perfect. I pull about a 30 gram yield and then put a four ounce milk in there, flat white, and it pretty much reaches the top. And the reason that you want the right volume is because it will allow you to get your spout closer to the top of your coffee and will allow you get that good latte art. And you also want a wide top, a wide mouth and a round bottom. So the milk doesn't bounce around. You basically want a baby bowl for your coffee. This is your coffee bowl. Basically you choose the cup size, the volume based on how much coffee plus froth milk volume goes in here. And that will be the cup that you end up getting. The other thing that you could also get that I do not have here because I've sold them are WDT tools. And that is with the little needles and it allows you to get a good fluff. Now I'll link some that I found down below that I came very close to buying, but with the Weber workshops key, I haven't really found a huge necessity to invest in that piece. And it has an integrated wiper. It's not quite a WDT, but it's been good enough for my needs. So I haven't felt the need to invest in another thing. And I don't want you to buy anything that you don't have to. I'm presenting all of this for you and you make your decision based on your needs. The WDT tool would help you with declumping. It would help you with evening out your coffee grinds in the portafilter before you tamp. B -b -b Bonus, <laughs> Kafiza powder. This thing is gonna last you forever. This is a must. You will need this to back flush your equipment every now and then. If you don't know what that is, look it up, but it's basically to help clean your espresso machine, run everything through. You might need a blind basket. Mine came with a little blind disc to prevent the water from going through the portafilter and pushing the water back up. You will need this for sure. You will need this to clean your basket or your portafilter. You will need this to clean various equipments. I have a video I'll link down below of what to clean, when to clean for your espresso gear. So this is absolutely a must as well. So that was a quick run through. I hope that wasn't too much information for you. I hope I was clear on everything for you so you were able to fully understand what each item did. For you, if you have any questions, please comment down below and I will do my best to answer if you have any suggestions and alternatives or what your must have items are, let me know down below. Please like this video if it has helped you or you found it entertaining and it can help a lot of other people. I know my other video helped quite a few people. This is like the step up version of that. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell notification to be notified. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.